First three people to leave a comment, I'll draw a bad picture of you. How's that? Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Look forward to that because they are bad pictures. I'll like, put some <laughs> of the pictures that I've done so far on the screen for you. The kindest thing to say is we've got individuality. Don't skip my rhymes. Welcome back to our review show where this week we are reviewing Herbie Fully Loaded. <laughs> Probably also a bad movie. <laughs> I've never seen it. It's Herbie Hancock, the album Headhunters. I guess just to keep with the usual theme week to week, how's things? What have you been up to? Any new music? Or? Um, <laughs> nothing, well, apart from the stuff you've been sending me. Mm-hmm. Um, what was it? The Jam? All oh, Mod Cons. Yeah, that was it. Yeah. So that completely defied expectations because I just assumed the Jam were... I should really not go into things with such preconceptions because uh, it's obviously it's, holding me back. It's hard not to, though. I'm finding a lot of the times, like, bands that I'm biased towards thinking, well, this is going to be rubbish. Mm. Usually, they're quite good. And who'd have thought it, being one of, like, the most recommended albums ever <laughs> in the history of time, that yeah. it'd be good. Yeah, you can't trust people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did I also sent you a song by Fellowship, that new oh. power metal band. You didn't like that? Oh, it sounded really underproduced which you I think? thought yeah I just thought it was really bad it sounded thought, like your old band I thought it sounded <laughs> like quite if anything a bit overproduced compared to a lot of power metal no I thought it sounded underproduced compared to a lot of power metal you're an idiot no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway so the album for this week let's keep it to the point is Herbie Hancock Headhunters kind of like seems to be like a pioneer in jazz music for when it came out was it 70s? 73 73 yeah yeah that, that should have been a warning sign right there a <laughs> pioneering jazz musician yeah I mean jazz is one of those <laughs> isn't it where there's people that are massively into it and there's people that just don't get it yeah I'm I definitely don't get it but yeah. I think for, for I think for you to get it Maybe you've got to be a muso, a musician. Maybe. Like, maybe. do you appreciate the artistic merit of this album? Yeah. Because yeah. I don't. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will say, so, first hearing this album was, how many weeks ago when I sent it to you? Maybe two or three two weeks, weeks ago? Yeah. yeah. Listened to it and I thought, I mean, that, that's why my review of it initially was a four out of ten. Because I was like, I get that there's some good musicianship there. They're good at their instruments. Mm. Not really for me, but like they're, they're doing what they're doing well. Yeah. Um, since listening to it several more times, why? <laughs> it's grown on me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Which is why like, when we've been discussing this, like between, I was kept stum because I wanted to like. <laughs> I know you've been very vocal about this album is awful. Yeah. I hate this album. It's like, I'm saying nothing about this because it, it genuinely has grown on me the yeah. more I've been listening to it. Like, when you first sent it to me, I think you sent, not the official review, but I think you said, this is four songs and it's 40 odd minutes long. Yeah. And I was like, well, this isn't going to be for me anyway. Yeah. And then, like, there are snippets of songs that actually would be good in if they actually fleshed out an actual song. But it's just it depends, like, like throwing yeah. a load of ideas. It's how you define a song, isn't it? Because it's all instrumental. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I like lots of instrumental. Yeah. So like that doesn't really... That's not a put off for me, the fact that there's no singing in it. I guess what is it that you don't like? Is, can you put your finger on it? Or? It's overlong, repetitive and boring. Okay. The three cardinal sins of music. I agree it can be repetitive. <laughs> I'm with you there. I wouldn't say it's boring just because there's so much going on all the time in it. But I think it's because, I know songs do this anyway, but because it, like, there's a bit on the, is it Chameleon, the first track? Yeah. The It seems like forever. It's 14 it's just, minutes, that song. Yeah. They're like, the, I don't know how long it is in that song, but it's like the first five minutes or something. It's just the same thing over and over again. Then it bum, does bum, something bum, a bit bum, more bum, interesting. Bum, bum. Bum, 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 <laughs> yeah, it's bum, Doug. Bum. <laughs> uh, oh no, it's not Doug, it's the Rugrats. And then it does it for like a minute, and you think, oh, this might be going somewhere. And then it just reverts back to that really boring yeah, bass line. I like that bass line. I, I like <laughs> the sound of it, that kind of fat synth sound of it. But um, something that kind of made it switch for me is like, if you like with lots of classical music, that it's trying to tell a story, but without lyrics... Like, if you think of it as, like, it's a chameleon, 
just kind of one of the most, without being a sloth, one of the most slothiest creatures that's out there that just kind of stands there wiggling its eyes all day. Mm. It's just kind of the coolness of just whatever I'm doing, nothing. And then the screeching sounds in it. I don't know whether this is what it's meant to be, what it was supposed to be thought of when they were making it. High-pitched bits is like a fly coming over, getting annoyed because the chameleons are all its mates. And then going back to that bass line, it's because the chameleon doesn't care. It's just so laid back and it's just so cool. It's whatever. Yeah. I think music... I don't know. For me, music has to excite or express some feeling other than boredom. Mm. Like, not express the feeling, invoke the feeling, sorry. Yeah, yeah, I get that. Because it sounded like, I I guess this is like jazz music in general, it sounds like lounge music. Yeah, I think the third track, Sly, and the last track... Oh, sorry. And the last track, Vein Melter, I think it's called, Mm -hmm. they sounded very much to me like I could... To be fair, even the second track, Watermelon Man... Is kind of like sitting in a cocktail bar with a cigar. I know you can't these days, mm. but it's very much kind of just sat there in a smoky room listening to the jazz musicians and stuff. Mm. I think Chameleon's less so, because that's more... I don't want to say electronica, because that didn't ex- exist then, but... But this album, didn't you say... And I think I've read online that this album had quite big influences on EDM. Yeah. Which, again... It should be shot for. <laughs> <laughs> but I I don't hear that in it, other than having the synth in it, which I'm sure lots of other bands did as well. Maybe, I don't know, maybe it was less at the forefront of it, like in Chameleon. Yeah. But yeah, I think this is one of those albums where, I guess like the Beatles, listening to the Beatles these days, a lot of the music, you can argue whether it sounds good or it sounds bad, but it sounds older. Yeah. It sounds less produced. It sounds dated. Mm-hmm. But without that there, we wouldn't have a lot of bands that's here today because they kind of started a lot of that. Like maybe we would have got there through some other route, but a lot of bands directly or indirectly are inspired by what the Beatles did. And I think that's the same for Herbie Hancock, specifically this album seemingly, in that this did influence lots of genres going forwards. Mm -hmm. So I guess even if you don't like the music, that's kind of cool. Yeah. What I found a bit of a letdown is that the... After I found out the third track slight never actually put in my mind what that might actually be. Yeah. But you said these really good friends with Sly out of Sly and the Family Stone and yeah. I just thought this could have been so much better. No, you misheard me, it was Sly Stallone. Ah oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah. Like, because you listened to one of their albums the other day that I was already familiar with, Stand. Yeah. What did you think of that? Yeah, I loved it. Yeah. It was great. Like that. They're an amazing band. Yeah. Herbie Hancock should not be able to even name a song <laughs> after that guy, because he uh, is just not great. I, like, I showed you a video as well earlier this year, he's still going. Like Herbie, Herbie Hancock, yeah, isn't yeah. he? And, like, yeah. He's played Glastonbury this year. Like him and I was gonna say him and all of his old mates in the band, but some of them I guess he just gets in newer people because yeah. I'm sure the drummer was like twenty six or something. So <laughs> just looks good for his age. Yeah, <laughs> hasn't done the heavy that most jazz musicians have. Yeah, so we would usually be saying top three songs of the album, with it being only four songs anyway. Yeah, I guess best song. Was there any that you enjoyed? No, uh, no. I have zero highlights. Like, like I said before, there are snippets of different bits on the songs that sounded okay and they would have fit nicely within a three-minute pop song, maybe. The title, Vein Melter, as well. That should be a metal song. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, how about you? I did... Probably my favourite... My favourite initially was Sly, because it did kind of put me more in the feeling of being, like, a hipster in a jazz bar and, like... You'd love that, wouldn't you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um... But on listening to it more, probably Chameleon's grown on me a lot. I was watching an interview with Herbie Hancock talking about the second song, Watermelon Man. And he was saying that he wanted to write something about, like, black culture. And he said, I've never been in a gang. I can't write about jail, which a lot of other people at the time were doing. Yeah. Um, I can't write about drugs. I've never been on drugs. So thinking back to his childhood, he said there was, like, a man down the street who was the Watermelon Man who kind of just go by selling watermelons down the street. Mm -hmm. And he just kind of wanted to put across the coolness of this guy who we thought... Like, he just seemed like a cool guy going down the street, like, get your watermelons. Yeah. That's something that I wouldn't have known without looking into it. 
Which then, should you need to research music to enjoy it? That's a whole different yeah. question. Well, if I like an album, then I'll look into the composition of it. But it shouldn't work. Facts. Yeah, it shouldn't work the other way around, though. It shouldn't no. be. I don't like this album, so I'll research it, and now I do like it because I've got the backstory and I understand where it's all coming from. So I, I, I can get that. I'm going to find out why this music's so bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, Anything you hated? Uh, in this, well, actually, the beginning of Watermelon Man, it's got like, I don't know if it's pan pipes or like... <laughs> Like, that sound, it kind of, like, I don't know why, if it's some sort of primal thing. The first time I listened to it, put me dead on edge. Like, that initial bit, and then kind of when it comes back into it throughout that song, it kind of, like, triggers some sort of anxiety. I was going to say angina, then. (laughs) That would be insane if it triggered that. (laughs) Listen to a song gives me angina. (laughs) Yeah, that's... the health one. Yeah. That's the only bit that I can say, like, I can put my finger in that that I don't like. And maybe you could say the fact that it did take several listens for the songs to grow on me isn't mm. not great. That's so is that something quality. you do a lot? So if you don't like an album the first time round, will you then listen to it again to check? Not necessarily. With this one, the first time I listened to it, I thought I didn't really like it. However, then a few days later, that bass line of Chameleon Man was stuck in my head. So I put... Uh, Chameleon Man is just Chameleon, wasn't it? Yeah. Baseline of Chameleon was stuck in my head, so I put that on and listened to that for a bit. Then we decided we'll be doing this for the episode. So because I knew that, I've had it on like every other day or something anyway, so I can get more familiar with it. Yeah. And through over listening to it, it's grown. I've forced myself to listen to it. Well, I've listened to it the initial once. I've forced myself to listen to it once more. Right. <laughs> That's as familiar as I want to be with this album. I've probably listened to it about five times. Oof. So <laughs> <laughs> that's two hours of your life you never came back. <laughs> yeah. Cover art was pretty trippy. Like yeah. I, I liked the cover art when that came up. I guess when I first got this, coming back to the thousand one albums generator that I've been doing, like I've never heard of Herbie Hancock. So it's just album art on its own. I was like, well, this looks pretty cool. Like yeah. I, I thought like... it was going to be like without knowing who it was. I'd never heard of him either. But I thought it was going to be like a psychedelic rock band. Hmm. Psychedelic jazz instead. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if we're through this one. We? we usually kind of ramble for a bit at the beginning. Well, it's like a four song yeah, album, isn't it? Less to talk not about. Not a lot to say. Yeah. And it's a boring album. Yeah. <laughs> so it's not, it's not going to create a load of conversation around it. I guess not, no. As, well, it wanted, as you wanted now to look into psychedelic jazz a bit more, <laughs> or is this where it stops? No, it's not like. Like I say, it has grown on me with some of the songs. Like, I still. When I say it's grown on me, it was initially a four out of ten album for me. Uh, hi. <laughs> it's now <laughs> maybe a five and a half. It's not like it's like I really love this album now. Like it's listenable to me. I mm. can I can have it on and not get <laughs> infuriated. Uh, I only get infuriated when I realise this man's made money off it. <laughs> <laughs> I could probably have done that. Just yeah. make a lot of random noises, glue them together, and do it for fifteen minutes. Do it. Then. I haven't got the instrument. <laughs> <laughs> Have we any ideas then for next week's album? Well, we do we talking... want to do Blackpink? Yeah, well, we said last night, didn't we, that we were going to do something a bit more modern than an obscure 1973 jazz album. Yeah. Just to get the viewers up, wink. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, shout out to any subscribers. But we've got nine. We've got nine so far. Very modest, yeah. but there's room... There's room to increase. Yes. Whereas if you PewDiePie Infinite. with like however many millions, <laughs> yeah. like there's not that much room to increase, is don't, there? Don't want to get that big anyway. No. <whistles> Doom Train. Yeah. I don't know that. Might Shout be. out to Doom Train. Well, it also, might be like coming off your Instagram. Yeah, it could be. If you're promoting this on there. Yeah. And yeah, if you've watched this to the end, leave a comment, like and subscribe. Yeah. Got it in there before uh, you. Leave a comment. That's the only reason why I'm here. First three people to leave a comment, I'll draw a bad picture of you. How's that? Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Bye then. Bye.